Folks, how we doing? Hey, I'm going to tell you what, we're getting there, babes. Okay, we're getting there in terms of electric circuits. So what we're going to talk about in this little video lesson is we're going to look at the different ways in which we can arrange uh, the components within our circuits. So you guys should have done a little lab activity looking at the two types, what are called series and parallel circuits. Now, when we talk about series and parallel circuits, we are focusing mainly on the components within the circuits, not including the batteries. Okay, we did talk about series batteries and parallel batteries and what that does to the voltage. So when we look at series circuits, we're focusing more so on the bulbs or resistors or other things that we place within the circuit and how we can arrange them. Um, what's the difference between series and parallel is obviously how they are arranged, but based upon how they are arranged, the circuit's going to act a little bit different and it's going to affect the voltage, it's going to affect the resistance, it's going to affect the current. So some of the relationships that we've looked at up to this point are going to stay true. So we've already talked about how voltage, in terms of like the batteries, the energy being supplied to the circuit, and that each bulb is going to use a part of that voltage and use the energy. Uh, that current is the flow of charge throughout a circuit. So again, as you see little blue electrons flowing through, uh, that, that is going to represent the current. And then resistance is what's placed in the current's way. And that we talked about in terms of Ohm's law, that there is a relationship between the current, the voltage, and the resistance that the current produced, which is the main thing of charge moving and going to those components, is related to the voltage supplied as well as the resistance. Now where this gets a little sassy is when we start to add multiple bulbs in different arrangements. So the first way that you guys investigated was to arrange bulbs in what are called series. So series means that there is one continuous path between all those components. So notice here there is a comp continuous what's called a loop that starting from the positive terminal of our battery going through or if we go from the negative in terms of electron flow that there is one complete path through this entire loop that the current that is created goes through every component there's no splits there's no junctions in the wires that there's one continuous loop if that's ever the case that things are going to be placed in what's called series now what i had you guys do was investigate what goes on between voltage current and resistance within these circuits and here's hopefully what you guys saw that first of all starting with the voltage when we have voltage supplied by the battery, and here in, our, in terms of our problem, or in our little uh, simulation here, we had 27 total volts supplied by the battery. That each bulb is going to, in a series circuit, is going to take a part of that 27 volts. So for example, bulb number one, the 10 ohm bulb, is going to take six volts. And I can determine that six volts by using Ohm's law. So I know that the current is voltage divided by resistance. Uh, I did show you guys that we can find voltage by taking current times the resistance. So bulb one would have six volts. Uh, bulb two, if I were to take the 15 ohms times the same current of 0.6, that I would get nine volts. And then lastly, this one, if you were to calculate, would give you 12 volts. Now we get six volts, nine volts, 12 volts. Again, if you were to add all those three numbers together, so if you were to do six plus nine plus 12, well, guess what? That gives you 27 volts. So the voltage supplied by the battery is gonna be divvied up to each bulb. And you'll notice here that the bulb with the greatest resistance, the 20 ohm bulb is gonna get the largest voltage. The bulb with the smallest resistance is gonna get the smallest voltage. And then that also relates back to um, you know, the brightness of the bulbs, we can see that this bulb with the greater resistance is the brightest of the three and so on and so on. So key thing here is that voltage is going to be divvied up in a series circuit. So if there's 27 total volts, that voltage is going to be split up between each resistor depending on its resistance. Next thing you had to investigate was the current. So you'll see here I placed the little ammeters throughout the circuit so you guys can see. Um, so you had to measure the current coming from the battery, the current going through each bulb. And what you should see in a series circuit is that the current is the same throughout. Now, the reason why this is the case is because there's only one path. So the current that's produced has only one path to follow. So it means that 0.6 amps has to go through the battery, has to go through bulb one, has to go through bulb two, has to go through bulb three, and so on. The current only has one path to go so it's going to be obviously going through everything in the same amount. It's not going to go through faster in one device versus slower in another one. Okay, now current again is based upon the voltage. And we do have again 27 volts being produced by the batteries. But again, current also depends on the resistance. 
So what ends up happening here is we have three resistors, three light bulbs that each have their own individual resistance. Made it a little bit difficult because they did not have the same resistance overall. But the current that is produced is determined by the total resistance that's in its way. Okay, so what I want you to recognize as well that when you look at the resistance of these three bulbs, and I think you guys saw this as we've been doing some of these labs, is that when you add more bulbs in the way, the current slows down, okay? And that the relationship between the voltage, resistance, and the current can be found using Ohm's Law. So just to show you how we got that 0.6 amps is because we have 27 volts of total voltage supplied by the battery, I have three light bulbs with 10, 15, and 20 ohms apiece. So that gives you a total of 45 ohms, okay? So the resistance is gonna increase, in this case, is gonna to add together. Uh, so what happens when I divide those two numbers is I'm gonna get 0.6. So the current that's produced is based upon the voltage supplied by the battery and then the total resistance that's in the way. And that's gonna be the thing that determines how much current is produced. It's gonna depend on the voltage and it's gonna depend on the resistance. And notice in this case that that one current that's produced is, has to go through all three bulbs. So essentially what happens is we start off 27 volts of energy being supplied to the charge. The charge is gonna look at the path and say, okay, there's 45 total ohms of resistance in my way, so I'm going to move at that speed. So these are kind of the rules that follow in a series circuit. And a parallel circuit is going to be a little bit different. Obviously, a parallel is different because of the arrangement. Instead of being aligned in one continuous loop, in a parallel loop, you're going to see these points right here. These are what are called a junction point. A junction is where the path that charge has to take splits. And that's what makes a circuit parallel is that you allow multiple paths for charge to flow. And think of the word parallel means that you have these paths that don't intersect. So you have the path here for bulb one, bulb two, and bulb three. And why I kind of drew it out like this is that obviously they look like parallel lines, okay? So a parallel circuit is gonna have those junction points. Now what happens at those junction points is all about the current. Current is going to come into that junction point and then it's going to split off into those separate loops. Each of these little loops is what's called a branch. So for example, this is a branch, this is a branch, and this is a branch. So what's gonna happen is current is going to split up at that junction. And again, anytime it meets a junction point, it's going to split accordingly. Now notice here in this last point, I don't have a junction, it's not gonna split. So charge would flow, and again, when it meets up at the bottom of the junction, when current comes in, they're gonna to join together to form more current as it comes into that junction point to eventually it goes back to the battery. And that's the key thing about a parallel circuit is that it's going to split up. Now in terms of voltage current resistance in a circuit, it's a little bit different, okay? First thing is current split. So I already talked about that, that at these junction points, the current is gonna split, which makes it different than a series circuit because the current was always the same in a series circuit. So now current is gonna split and go into each branch. And the amount of current that goes into each branch is going to be dependent upon, again, the voltage and the resistance. So again, still gonna follow Ohm's law of voltage divided by the resistance. Now, what's different about this is the voltage. We know again with three batteries that there's 27 volts being supplied by the batteries. Okay, now, in a series circuit, that's the one we just looked at, that voltage was divvied up to each bulb. What you should have seen in a parallel circuit is that if these bulbs are all connected in parallel to each other, as well as being in parallel to the battery, that each light bulb is going to have 27 volts. Okay, so in a parallel circuit, the voltage is going to be shared. And you guys should hopefully have seen that in some of the labs that anytime two bulbs were next to each other, not in line, but next to each other, they shared a common voltage. So they all have a voltage of 27 volts. The way I like to think about why the voltage is the same is it reminds me of like Noah's Ark water park. Is that, let's say you wanna go down a water slide. Now why do I use a water slide? Because you start off with potential energy and you go down to get kinetic energy. So what ends up happening is this is like a water slide. You go to the top, you go down, and you this would be like the stairs. You go up the stairs, you go to the top of the slide, you go down and you cycle through. Okay, so why all of these have the same voltage is this is like having a water slide that has three of the same slides. If you've got a lot of people going down these slides, you're going to allow for multiple paths. So you could have some people go here, some people go here, and some people go here. Same thing like with traffic. 
let's say I'm driving down the road, if there's one lane, I'm going to move at a speed in relation to how many people are in my way. But if there's multiple lanes, I can choose whatever lane I want to go to. If there's a lane with more people, I move slower. If there's a lane with less people, I move faster. That's kind of what goes on here. And you'll see that again with the current then. Current is going to be based upon the voltage, which is always going to be, in this case, the same as the battery, if they're all in parallel with the battery. But again, the current's also based upon the resistance. So you'll notice here, 10 ohm resistance, the smallest resistance creates a current of 2.7 or sorry, 2.7 amps, versus the largest resistance of 20 ohms creates a smaller current of 1.35. So key little detail here is that current is always going to take the path of least resistance. So if there's ever a split in a path, it's going to, more current's going to go down the path with less resistance than go down the path with more resistance. One other point of note here is that, again, if for current, we have 1.8 amps in this branch, 1.35 amps in this branch, 2.7 here, that if I were to add up all three of these uh, currents, all three of those amps, what I should get is 5.85 amps. It should add up to the total current produced, okay? Now, the total current produced, again, is going to be based upon the total resistance. So the last thing here in terms of resistance, this is the tricky one, but when you place bulbs in parallel, what ends up happening is instead of creating a larger resistance, you end up creating a smaller resistance. So here I have 10 ohms, 15 ohms, and 20 ohms. In a series circuit, those would add together to give me 45 ohms. But in a parallel circuit, what's going to end up happening is that the total resistance is actually going to decrease which is going to be a little bit tricky. All right, so those rules of series and parallel circuits can get a little confusing, all right? And again, it's all following the same relationships we looked at, that we have the current, voltage, and resistance that are all related to each other based upon Ohm's law again. Now, what's tricky is that when we're aligning light bulbs in different arrangements, what we are actually affecting is we are affecting the resistance. That if I start to place bulbs in series, the resistance is going to get bigger. And when I place them in parallel, the resistance is going to get smaller. So what ends up happening is that when you place bulbs or any sort of resistor in different arrangements, that you are creating what's called an equivalent resistance. That those individual resistors, individual bulbs, essentially add together to form what's called a total resistance. Equivalent is just obviously what we see as the word equal. Okay, so if I place three bulbs in series, that they're going to create an equivalent resistance. Essentially, what they, we can view this as is a bunch of bulbs added together to form one giant bulb that has a certain resistance. Okay, now the equivalent resistance or the total resistance that's created is all based upon the arrangement. So we have our two arrangements. We have what's called a series arrangement where they're all in one loop. And we have our parallel arrangement where they are placed in parallel with each other, so in different branches. Okay. Now, when we place them in series, well, I think this is pretty easy. What we already found is that simply the resistance are going to add together. So, for example, if I have two 6-ohm resistors, if they're placed in series, imagine this is like having a single 12-ohm resistance. Okay. Therefore, if I know the voltage across that circuit, let's like say it's 27 volts, and I know the resistance, I can find the current. If I were to have three bulbs all lined up in series again, they're going to all add together to give you 18 total ohms. So in a series circuit, it's as simple as that they add together. What gets tricky is the parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, what we found is that the total resistance is actually going to decrease, that adding things in parallel is actually going to drop the resistance. So how the heck does that work? Okay. The way that these add together in a parallel circuit is that they do not add together as basic numbers. So for example, six and six would give me 12. What ends up happening here is if we want the opposite effect, we call that an inverse. So in a parallel circuit, when the adding resistance and the overall resistance gets smaller, well, that's an inverse relationship. You're increasing the number of bulbs, but yet the resistance gets smaller. So what ends up happening here is that to find the equivalent or total resistance, we're gonna add them as inverses. So you'll see one over, one over, one over. So for example, if I have three six ohm resistors as shown here, I would add this as one over six plus one over six plus one over six. That would give me a total of three over six, okay? Now, the tricky part about this and how this works then is three over six is the same thing as saying one half. 
So you'll notice here in the diagram, notice how it gives me two ohms. So how the heck do I get two ohms out of one half? Because what ends up happening is we're looking at this relationship looks at the inverse. Okay, so what I need to do in the end is when I take that one over two, I'm gonna take the inverse of it and just flip it around and that would give me two, okay? So what ends up happening is they add as inverses, but then at the end, I just gotta flip that again to give me my overall resistance. And I could do this here with one over nine, plus one over nine, plus one over nine. Again, that's gonna give me three ninths, okay? Which is the same thing as saying one third. And if I were to flip one third, that would give me a resistance of three ohms. So notice here what happens is that when I add them in parallel, my overall resistance is getting far less. Okay, when I add them in series, they're adding together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply our rules of series and parallel circuits with that idea of the equivalent resistance to analyze the voltage, current, and resistance within a circuit. So here I have a series circuit with three resistors. Now, this is what's called a schematic diagram, and this is something that we're actually not gonna cover just for the sake of, of time and what we're doing, um, but this is our symbol for like a battery, so you'll see here that voltage total. R1 is meant, represents resistance, so think of this as like a light bulb. Here's a second light bulb and a third light bulb. This is just our symbol for resistor. Okay, but I have three light bulbs, 17, 12, and 11, all placed in series with each other. So again, what's gonna happen is that based on this, based on the voltage of the battery, that a current is gonna be produced. So there's gonna be a current that's producing that circuit. And what we know is that this is a series circuit, that current is gonna go all the way around throughout that circuit. But that current, again, is gonna be based upon the resistance and the voltage. We know that the voltage is 60 volts, okay? But what we have to figure out is first, what is the overall resistance within my circuit. So we're gonna find what's called the equivalent resistance. To do that, I'm gonna take all three resistors and I'm gonna add them together. So 17 plus 12 plus 11. That's gonna give me a total resistance of 40 ohms, okay? Now, that kind of gets everything going. So the current that's produced, and I'll draw this in green. The current, again, that's produced is gonna be based upon the voltage and the resistance. So I know that there's 60 total volts in the circuit, and I now figured out that there's 40 ohms total in the circuit. So if I were to divide 60 by 40, I know that in this circuit, there's a total current of 1.5 amps that's produced, okay? Now that 1.5 amps that leaves the battery is gonna go through each uh, bulb or each resistor, but since this is a series circuit, here's what we know. We know that that 1.5 amps is gonna go through each bulb the same. So I know that the current through each of these is all gonna be 1.5 amps. And lastly, we gotta look at the voltage. So I know that there's 60 total volts, volts supplied by the batteries. And again, in a series circuit, the voltage is gonna be split up amongst each of the resistors or bulbs in the way. Okay, so there's gonna be some of that 60 volts that goes to the first resistor, some of it that goes to the second, and some of it that goes to the third. And what we talked about again is the one that has the most resistance, the 17 ohms is gonna get a majority of that. Now, how the heck do I find the voltage? Well, instead of using the relationship I equals V over R to find voltage, I can take V equals I times R. It's another way to write Ohm's law. So then I can take the current of 1.5 amps, which is I, times the resistance of each, 17, 12, and 11, and I can find the voltage for each. So if I take 1.5 times 17, that's going to give me 25.5 volts. If I took 1.5 times 12, that's gonna give me 18 volts. And then lastly, if I did 1.5 times 11, that would give me 16.5 volts. And if you were to add those three numbers together, guess what, you get 60 volts. Okay, so what I was able to do here is by knowing the resistance and the arrangement, I was able to find that total resistance, which allowed me to find the total current, and I can analyze how each of those bulbs is going to receive the current and the voltage based upon those numbers that we got. We can do the same thing now with a parallel circuit. Okay, so again, we have our same three bulbs, resistors, but now they're placed in parallel. Okay, so this is again a schematic diagram. This is the battery. I know we have 60 volts total again, but now we have our three resistors added together in parallel. So the first thing we got to do again is that in this circuit, there's going to be a current that's produced, okay? So the current is going to leave the battery and go through that loop. Now, once it hits this point right here, that's called a junction. Some of the current is going to go through R1. 
Some of it's going to go through R2, but then there's another junction point, and some of it's going to go through R3 until they all eventually meet back up again at that point. So anytime they reach a junction, the current is going to split up. So why this is different is that the current in each of these is not going to be the same like it was in a series. Okay, So it gets a little confusing because now all of a sudden the current splitting, it's going to be different. And based upon the resistance, I know that more current is going to go through this because it has less resistance than over here, which has the most resistance. Now what I do know in a parallel circuit is that in a parallel circuit, I do know that the voltage is going to be the same throughout, that all three of these are going to have the same voltage. And since all three of these are connected to the same battery, they're all going to have 60 volts. And again, that's the same throughout because they're all three connected to the battery in the same way, just multiple paths. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to obviously figure out the current. We're good on voltage, but we have to figure out the current here. In order to figure out the current, the amount of current that's going to be produced is all, again, based upon the voltage, which we know, and the overall resistance, which in this case we have to figure out. Now the tricky part here is that with a parallel circuit... We have to add these things together in inverses because in a parallel circuit, as you add more resistors in parallel, the resistance is going to go down. So instead of adding 17, 12, and 11 as is, I'm going to add them as inverses. And this gets a little sassy, folks, because we are adding fractions that don't have a common denominator. So if you have a calculator, you're able to use this, but I'll add these three things together for you. I'm going to write this down as a decimal. Uh, but as a decimal, you would get 0 0.233. Now, the thing about this is that this is not the actual resistance, that in terms of my equivalent resistance, that the last thing i got to do is actually take the inverse of this. So what I'm going to have to do is take this number that I already found, and I'm going to have to inverse it again. So those that know inverses, I'd have to raise it to the negative 1, but I'm going to have to flip that fraction again. I can do that on my calculator. And when I do that, what I'm going to get is an equivalent resistance of 4.29 ohms. Okay, so 4.29. So notice again, we have three resistors placed in parallel, and my resistance drops all the way down to around 4 ohms. Now, once I know my equivalent resistance, then I can use again, I can use Ohm's law. I know that I equals V over R. So I know that there's 60 volts. There's 4.29 ohms of resistance, so I can find the current, and I'm going to round this answer, but you get about 14 amps, about 13.9, so you get about 14 amps, I'll round that out, okay? Now that 14 amps, that's a lot of current that's flowing through that circuit, that would represent this arrow right here, this would be the 14 amps. So once it hits these junction points, that current is going to split to each of these three branches, depending on the resistance. So I can find those individual currents by using the same relationship, V divided by R. What I know is that the voltage for each branch is going to be 60. So for example, I can do 60 divided by 17, which would give me around 3.5 amps. I can then do 60 divided by the next resistor, which is 12. And that's going to give me 5 amps, so notice smaller resistance, more current. And then lastly, I'll do 60 divided by 11, which gives me 5.5 amps. And again, smallest resistance has the most current. And again, if you add those three numbers together, 3.5, 5, and 5.5, you're going to get 14 amps. So parallel circuits are much more difficult to analyze, and that is because the resistance is a little bit weird. And sometimes those numbers aren't going to add up pretty like they would in series, because we're adding inverses. So again, this video lesson, a little bit longer, looked at series and parallel circuits, looked at the voltage, current, and resistance, and how they were related in each of those arrangements. If you guys got questions, good luck. Your goal is you're going to work on a little concept builder on that idea of equivalent resistance. Good luck, folks. We'll see you next time.